Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Bobolero's podcast. This is episode 22 already and on this podcast we talk about primarily knitting, inspiration from the world of the classical arts. We talk about film. No, we don't. We don't talk about film. We talk about music. Here's my piano. I'm going to play you a little piece of music. We're going to talk about Newtedin, which is a yarn, if you're not familiar with, I have been experimenting with. And so I want to talk about that with you and also a giveaway of Newtedin yarn. So we are going to do an unboxing thing. I will show you the yarn I have for the giveaway, which I have not seen before, but I want to show you. And then we're just going to talk about all the things. I have a finished object, which I am wearing, and I'll tell you all about it, as well as a couple of whips. So let's get started. So this week, a friend of mine asked me this question. She said, Margaret, do you know what the profession that has the happiest people what that is. And I said, no, I don't know. What's the happiest profession? It's a good question, right? Like, hmm. And the answer surprised me. She said, beekeepers. And I said, really? That's like really amazing. And then I found out that one of the reasons that it's the healthiest of professions is because of the sound that the bees make in the hive, the buzzing and the frequency of those sounds. And you guys know I love going down that rabbit hole with you just because color when we knit and sound when we listen to music, um, they're all just waves, either sound waves or waves of color when we see. And so there is kind of a, a marriage there of ideas. And so one thing I learned about the beehives this week is that the frequency that they are making that is so healthy and restorative is actually C. So beehives are pretty much tuned to the key of C. And with that in mind, I wanted just to play a piece, a short piece by J.S. Bach. I've played it before. I just thought it was so appropriate for this conversation and just to start by tuning ourselves up into that healing, um, beautiful key of C. And I think Bach, J.S. Bach in this first prelude that he compose portrays that beautiful peace that beautiful feeling of comfort that beautiful feeling of energy and new life and restoration and so i just share this with you for upliftment and encouragement and new energy to flow so here is the bach prelude in c Thank you. 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. That was the Bach prelude in C major, and that is from his well-tempered clavier, which goes through all of the major and minor keys, of which altogether there are 24, each one of them a different feeling, a different mood. It evokes different energies within us, and it is so powerful and so beautiful. So let us now go into the segment Flash Your Bobos, and this is where we present one of the knits that any of you wonderful viewers are making either with Boboleros yarn or with Boboleros designs. And so this is my first design for Boboleros, which is the Coco Bolero. And it is a take on the classic Chanel jacket. Every time I wear this, people ask me if that was crocheted or at least fiber people ask me if that is crocheted. And the answer is no, it is a knit. And so here is a version that Deidre is making and she is using the most fantastic colors. And she came over to the little pop-up that I was doing with Boboleros at a local yarn crawl we were doing in New Jersey a few weeks back. And so this was at Will and Grace in Summit and Deidre was so fantastic. She came out and um, we picked her colors for her bolero. And as you could see, she chose a really great shocking hot pink along with a speckled it's more like um a kind of like speckled tweedy kind of thing and this is yarn by loopy mango number five and i never had seen a speckled combination and i just think it's so spot on so thanks deidre for sharing that picture and it looks fantastic and i just cannot wait to see the finished object and if you guys are at all interested in having a garment that is great to pair with whatever you've got in your wardrobe um like i'll put it on jeans it works with skirts it works with you know even like what i have on right now i mean it is just a very very quick knit you could even put buttons on if you so choose or just one button you can do like a lot of knitters recently have been putting like little scarves to just put it all together. So as you can see, it's a very structured, tailored fit. It also has a double crocheted edge along the sides, which um, you know gives it a nice shape. And as you can see, it's got nice shoulders and that is done with um, a very simple simple technique and so yeah uh, many of you guys are making it right now and if you're interested in making the coco bolero i have just thought um yesterday actually of doing a knit along and so details are still kind of coming together it'll be really exciting It'll be for the end of summer into early fall. So it'll be like, if you guys are planning on going to Rhinebeck, um, it'll be a perfect time to kind of make your boleros. Maybe we'll even have a meetup in Rhinebeck. And yesterday, I don't know if you caught the live I did with Vita Lifestyles. Victoria is one of my dear friends. She's so beautiful. She's one amazing, amazing dyer. And she is right now in her launch for her Calabria collection, which is a collection of, I believe, 10 different colorways based on Calabria, Italy, which is where her family is from. And she was there last summer for a trip. And I mean, if colors could tell the story of Italy and that area of, you know, Southern Italy, then this collection is just basically Italy in a skein <laughs> or many skeins. Uh, the whole color story is amazing from the blues and the azures and the uh, Mediterranean blues to the reds and um, even creams and light blues. She has like a, a colorway base, like 
inspired by swordfish that she saw there, a colorway based on the um, peppers and colorway based on, of course, the water and the rocks and the hills. And I mean, it's just incredible. So if you haven't checked it out, if you're interested in seeing that and all the wonderful bath and beauty and home products that she includes as part of the collection, check it out on Vita Lifestyles ny.com i'll put the link below and i think the pre-sale um, is on until next week so that's how she does it like she'll do uh like a pre-sale and then once it's closed it's closed so i jumped on yesterday uh, and got some fantastic linen spray and this bergamo um, scent which i was super excited about um as well as a candle. Yeah, I did all like the scents because if you saw last week's podcast when I went to the um, mansion in May where it was a designer showcase and I entered this one room and it was not only visually beautiful, but it smelled so good. And it was because they had this diffuser of this really special scent and it got me thinking like how much a good smelling room lifts like your mood and I don't know it's just there's something to it so yeah got the linen spray got all those goodies yesterday <laughs> so in any case in the live uh, Vita and I were discussing the possibility of collaborating on a Coco Bolero knit along and the possibility that maybe she'll even dye some kits with her color ideas and I'll do some of my color ideas. And so anyway, um, details will unfold as they get more and more um, clarified and as we get closer to the end of summer. But I just wanted to throw it out there and um, let you guys know. And if that's something that you might be interested in, please drop a line below and just let me know. It just gets me all pumped up and um, my juice is flowing uh, to make something fun for all you guys. And so, okay, so we got that and oh my gosh, look at this. Look at what I have here. All the way from Sweden, I have a parcel. And in this parcel is Nutidin yarn. Oh yes. We don't mess around. We don't mess around. Go big or go home, right? <laughs> New to din. It is a beautiful unspun wool. It's very popular. And I got to know it about it last year and, you know, through some podcasts and things. And I couldn't wait to check it out. And so. I never actually started knitting with it until this week. And I also have a bunch of yarn that has been delivered. And guess what? I have too much yarn. And so I am giving this away in the giveaway this week. So I'm going to open this up, unbox it um, towards the end of this episode. And I will give you a question. If you're interested in participating in the knit along, just a couple of steps, um, which is to answer the following question, uh, which is, you know, in talking about color pairings for the Coco Bolero, two colors, I'm curious, what are some of your favorite color pairings that you would like to knit with? So that's number one. Are you more like neutral palette? Are you more um, like pops of like neons and greens? Are you more romantic palette? Um, I would just love to know what colors, especially two together, interest you in the knitting department. So that's the question. And if you can also subscribe to my newsletter, this channel, and follow me on Instagram, that would just help me to grow this whole Bobaleros um, podcast and stuff. Okay, so anyway, let's do the unboxing afterwards and on with the knitting content. Okay, so as you can see, I finished my 
Magnaflora. And this is a pattern by Elisa Hartel, and it just um, was very, very quick knit. So this is my finished object of the week. And I will tell you the colors that I chose for this. So this is a yarn, which is by Sadness Garn, and it's the Lena yarn. And hold on, of course, I forgot to bring it. Lina, Lina, Lina. Okay, we are back. Lina, Lina by Sadness. Sorry, I'm trying to focus. Focus, 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 camera, please focus. Focus for me. Why aren't you focusing? In any case, you can get the idea of the color. It's this Celadon green. And it is color 8532. And I paired that also with this very thin yarn, which is a kind of metallic sequin yarn. And this I got on Etsy. And I'll show you. It's made by Alyssa. And I have so many different colors in this. I really, if you go on Etsy and you are interested in this, you type in King Cole. This is a secret that I got from Vanessa from Knit Collage. She told me about it. And anyway, these two together made this fabric. I wanted to have a little bit of shimmer to this because to me this color it just felt like very silvery and it felt like it kind of was calling for a little bit of bling and so let me tell you about the fit I did the smallest size I pretty much followed the pattern to a T I did size down one needle size and that was just because not because of gauge problems but just because I don't know some of my needles have gone missing since Maya came back from college. I don't know if she's listening to that, but um, <laughs> yeah, so I used one size less, um, which I don't remember anymore what it was. Um, maybe a nine, maybe an eight, I don't remember. But whatever is the pattern, um, just go down one needle size if this kind of um, fabric interests you. Um, okay, so like you could see the shimmers like, isn't that cool the way that Alyssa dances, right, with the shimmer? The lace work pattern um, was really fun to do. Let me just say, I thought there would be a chart for the lace. I was hoping for a chart, and when there wasn't a chart, I got a little bit nervous because I have a hard time if I don't see a chart I have a hard time visualizing the finished product and you know getting lost in the pattern and as it was I had to completely restart and the problem was that as you start the lace there's one place like maybe in the fifth row where now suddenly um, you kind of like go off at the first stitch and you knit it and like whereas you're used to kind of having eight stitches to one um, repeat of the lace. Now you've got like nine just for one um, segment of it and then all the rest is eight. So that freaked me out. I was like, what is going on? Why, could, why is there one lace um, section with nine stitches and the rest have eight? Well, the reason was because then the pattern creates this staggered diagonal effect, which didn't seem obvious to me at the time. I never was great with math, spatial relations kind of stuff, geometry, forget it. So it takes me a long time to process that kind of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> hence my need for a visual guide, like a chart. But in any case, um, once I got going, what I did do though, and I recommend for people that 
like me are a little bit squeamish about doing lace, I put stitch markers in every time I saw that it was a repeat of that lace section. So I think I had almost 20, I think, lace repeats, like 18 or something like that. Uh, and so I was able to see what was going on. And then when that row would come in with that extra stitch, I just kept it um, like, and anyway, it evens out because your last lace section will be less stitches to kind of equalize for that extra one in the first, if that makes sense. Um, it makes, the way I'm talking about it, makes it seem way more complicated than it actually is. You could just follow the pattern carefully as is and have no problems. But for me and my, um, you know, kind of wacky way of thinking, I was like, wait a minute, something doesn't compute and I like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I restarted and I'm happy I did actually because some of my stitches the first time around were kind of wonky and um, I was careful. If you do use the Alyssa in conjunction with the Lena, one thing that I would suggest is be careful that the yarn doesn't split on you. That did happen to me a few times I'm not really sure why. And there are places also where I didn't catch, you see like here, like I didn't catch the, um, I don't know if you could see it, but yeah, I didn't catch the uh, Stellina, the um, sequin yarn. And so, you know, it's not a big deal. You could just kind of take a crochet hook and kind of stuff it inside and nobody will know. But in any case, you just gotta be careful with that. Um, one thing I would change is that this body section is supposed to go for five inches, which I followed exactly. However, for me, I, I, I'm pretty long-waisted, so I'm wearing a very high-waisted skirt with this. Like you could see, like this is really high. And so this is fine to wear with this, but like any other garment that's not as high-waisted, I would feel like really uncomfortable wearing this unless I had like a camisole underneath or a tank or something. So just try on and like, if you're a long-waisted person, I would suggest going a little further than five inches, maybe six, perhaps even seven. I could have gone further. In retrospect, I would have, but you know, like right now, I really like where it hits with this particular skirt. So I think like with some high-waisted things in my wardrobe, this will be perfect. So I just have to like make sure that, yeah, I pair it with the right thing. Uh, also the sleeves, when you were um, told to bind off in the pattern, they suggest going two needle size higher. I'm glad I did to avoid that bind off issue that I always have. It seems like I'm always binding off too tightly. This was perfect. So I definitely sized up. And then here for the sleeves, I did the same thing and I sized it, um, two needle sizes higher and even still it's a little bit snug so just beware that you might want to be cautious when you're binding off the sleeves that it's not too tight um and other than that that was it so a very very quick knit i did this in less than a week and that included restarting um it goes by quickly and it's a pleasure and it's a well-written pattern. I love the story in the beginning of the pattern. Um, the reason why it's called Magna Flora and the nice story of Elisa, the designer walking, I believe it was in um, Savannah or someplace like that and seeing those gigantic magnolias on these trees and being inspired um, to make this sweater. So the whole story, is just beautiful the pattern is great and i just really enjoyed that fabric with the sadness garn and they have a ton of colors and i purchased that yarn and mother knitter and that's in new jersey and they're the largest or the u.s distributor of sadness garn and um, they have all the colors it's absolutely incredible so yeah so that's my only finished object but I would love to show you my work in progress. So my game plan 
if you watched last week, my game plan was to make all the summer teas. And my next one was going to be the Anchor Tea by Petite Knit, which Maya is finishing up. And I showed you Maya's colors and just perfection. It's like a beautiful kind of khaki green and fantastic. And Maya's been just doing great with that knit. And so I was going to cast on right away for that. But then, okay, so one of like the wonderful things about having Maya home from college for the summer is that at night we put on dorky comedies, romantic comedies. They're not dorky. Actually, I really enjoy them but usually from the 80s and 90s, and we just sit and we knit. And so um, the other night, we were watching Runaway Bride <laughs> with Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, and it was actually really good. And um, before that, we watched You've Got Mail, which, why do I always cry at that ending? I don't know why. I've seen that a million times, and like it's just one of those... New York stories and I just I don't know it gets me every single time but kind of like funny story when they were filming that movie I think it was probably 97 or something like that I was living on the Upper West Side of Manhattan just a few blocks from where they were filming and so they were filming it and at like this little bakery called Soutine which I don't think exists there anymore, but it was on 70th right off of Columbus. And so they were filming it in, on that block. So one day I was walking to Juilliard and I was like, what are all these people doing? And they were literally, it was a summer, it was like spring day, I guess, or, or it definitely wasn't autumn. And they were taking autumn leaves and they were gluing them on the trees. And I was like, what are they doing here? And so then I asked somebody there, I was like, what's going on here? Why are they gluing fake leaves on these trees? And they said, it's because they're filming You've Got Mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, and they want it to look like it's autumn. And I thought, oh, that's so cute. Anyway, um, that took me back. So I digress. In any case, um, we were knitting and after we watched all the 90s romantic comedies, she put on a podcast and like a knitting podcast, which I never, uh, you know, young ones, they always find these podcasts that I don't know, I would never find. So she finds and she's been binge watching someone named True Lane, True Lane. And this beautiful young woman from Seattle who knits like just incredibly. So from what I gather from the little I've seen, she works at a knitting store. I don't know if that's full-time or part-time, but in any case, she um, knits beautifully. And so when she showcased her sweater number 14 by My Favorite Things, which is, you know, just your oversized V-neck, you know, just like that go-to sweater. I said, wow, I really need that. Now, I make a lot of um, fancy sweaters, but when it comes to actually practical sweaters, I don't make many. <laughs> I would consider this more of a fancy sweater because I'm not really wearing lace on the day today, on the daily, as they say, in the, you know, the cool people say. So, um, anyway, I said, I need that kind of like everyday sweater. So I've got one, which is the turtle dove and I made it five years ago in the wolf folk luft. And I love that sweater and I must wear it several times a week. It's pilling at this point. It's gotten so much wear and it still looks good. And I'm like, I need a workhorse sweater like that. So I couldn't help it. I'm like, let me do the yarn pairing that True Lane did. Now, what True Lane did is she used a combo of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter with one strand of Kid Silk Haze Rowans. And so I remembered that I had in stash for like years and years and years some Brooklyn Tweed in the colorway Ember. So here it is, it's like caked up. Right. But, um, it's this really, really saturated 
brown red kind of terracotta color and let me just show you the label oh shelter did i say it was shelter brooklyn tweed shelter and so it's a american targi colombian wool columbia wool and this in some ways is like the nutidin because although it is spun but you know there's um a very rustic quality to it it's got these like cool nibs as well in it like little yellow speckles and red but i didn't have a matching mohair so i'm like where can i find a matching mohair i start scouring the internet and i did find that knitting for olive has a color um that was very similar to it and i believe that the color is autumn I'll put it in the show notes. And then I was like, where am I gonna find knitting for Olive? So I looked at the retailers and there is actually a store that carries knitting for Olive about, again, an hour away from my house. And I had never been there before. It's called Knit Tapestry and it's in Waldwick, New Jersey. And so there I was on Thursday morning um, driving to get the knitting for Olive. And as you could see, it's, the same it's like a perfect match right so i was so gung-ho to start like i just couldn't wait so i get home and i cast on and uh, true lane really was saying that the fabric she got was really extra and so i was really excited to um begin it and so i got this far i started doing these short rows and all but as I'm knitting this, I'm like asking myself, is this the color that I want my everyday sweater to be in? Like, it's not a color that I usually would wear. And especially as like an everyday sweater, maybe it would limit me with what I could pair it with. So the more I got going on it, the more I was starting to question, like, is this the direction I want to take? So I stopped and then I went on Ravelry and I looked at some of the other projects people made of the sweater number 14 and I saw that some people use Newtonin. And then I thought, wait a minute, I've got a lot of Newtonin in stash that I have never used before. So I took it out and I said, okay, let me begin. So this is what I found and I just love it. Look at this. It's called Languster. I, I got it about a year ago. Um, if you're not familiar, the unspun wo uh, wool, it kind of will pull apart like that. It's like a cloud. I did make a hat for a friend out of um, Newton and I doubled it. And the cool thing about this yarn is like if you hold it far apart yes it's gonna pull apart but if you call hold it like really close it's like not it's really really taut it's it's very interesting and the colors you know they don't use chemicals like they're very very um, about nature and ecologically friendly and there is just such a massive color story here which I don't know if it renders but I mean, you've got all these different shades of like yellow and some like light lavender peeking through. It really is, um, there's a whole world in this skein. So I said to myself, what if I pair one strand of Nutidin with, I have so much of this Issigar mohair in this colorway, which I don't know if I have the tag in here anymore, but um, I've got like a bunch of this that I once ordered for another project, which I never made. And I thought, wow, this is just like a soft palette. And I was really feeling like the vibes for a soft palette. So I cast on, yes I did, but I cast on twice. <laughs> so let me show you um, that the it's so different what you get if you use like, let's say 
this yarn combo and just change the needle size. So I first cast on with a 10 and here it is on a 10. So I started to work. I really liked everything, but one thing I noticed right away was that there was going to be like an airy, I don't know why this camera is not focusing. Um, there was going to be like an airy quality to this. And I was thinking, do I want, you know, to have it that airy? I didn't want to worry about, oh, now I need to wear like a camisole or t-shirt underneath or anything like that. I'm just trying to focus this. So, um, yeah. So I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I said, okay, I'm going to restart, but this time on a nine, the pattern calls for a 10. So I restarted on a nine and I'm getting a, a much more solid rendering of this fabric, which I'm, I'm more pleased with. So yeah, I just finished the like 27 or so short rows and now I'm going further with the pattern. And this is probably going to be more like a kind of blush situation and I like it. So um, yeah, so far so good. Um, super excited about that. And there you go. There have been no other things in my work in progress um, that I've had a chance to even like touch. So, um, but there were some stash acquisitions made in preparation for my um, anchor tee. I thought, let me go again with the sequins. And since I'm using kind of like also a kind of green khaki, I got some sequin yarn. It's not exactly a match, but it's kind of close. So, and even if it's not, it's just nice to have more green sequin in the stash. So this is by Ella Ray, um, sequin, sequinicity. I like that. Add sparkles to any project. Indeed. Sequinicity. So, um, yeah, I got this off of Etsy and it came quickly and I'm excited. Uh, I realized that it's easy to get the wrong gauge. Like sometimes the sequin yarn is thick, more of a DK. And so you just have to like watch out cause I almost ordered the wrong thing. So that was just, um, yeah, something to be careful for. And so that's about it. Um, in terms of that and one other, acquisition which I could say is really a super good thing is well we know about the knitting barber cords but what I didn't know and this is like from the store mother knitter when we went Maya and I went there last week they had barber cords like it was I don't know how this works really because I had to for one barber cord essentially for like the body of a sweater and two sleeves, I was like buying the original barber cord for $20 or so in a little tin. Now suddenly I'm at Mother Knitter and they said that Satin is Garn put out like a whole bag of barber cords. And this just totally was blowing my mind because I think this whole bag was like around $12, $13, something like that. And this is for large size needles. Guys, I went so far. I was like on such a hunt for barber cords for the larger size needles and I couldn't find it that I actually bought medical tubing off of Amazon at one point. Um, that was a complete fail by the way, cause it was so grippy that the yarn just like would be like <laughs> stuck on the tube. It was an absolute disaster, just in case um, you guys were thinking of the same strategy. But now, um, look no further. Sadness Garn makes large size um, barber cords. So I got those and then I couldn't like pass up to get more normal size barber cords because you always need them, right? For all your different projects on the go. Uh, now I could like just 
throw in a barber cord so that you're never without, because you always have to try on. Like, I'm a big believer. That's been a game changer for me, is to try on stuff. So there you go. Um, I think you could get these on the Mother Knitter website. And that's it. Oh, and last thing. This was a few weeks ago, but I forgot to show it. So, the half and half wrap. I have so much yarn that I wanted to like use for that, which is the Linen Quill by Pearl Soho. I have many colors that I got years ago when the um, whole, you know, um, triangle wrap phenomenon got going. But then Jackie recently um, made such a gorgeous one again, like her eighth or something. And this is Caddy Jack's. Um, that I just thought, oh my gosh, just to have those colors on hand was so nice. And because Pearl Soho was having a big sale, I think like 20% off. And I said, okay, so if I'm even curious, here's the time. So I got two colors in the, um, oh, those are so nice together. Gosh. So this is the Pearl Soho Linen Quill, and this is 50 fine Highland wool, 35% alpaca, and 15% linen. And so let me just check this color. What is the name of this color? It is Pink Pop. Isn't that fun? That is such a nice thing. And then this one is Raw Sienna, which to me is more of a camel. Raw Sienna doesn't like to me, I always think it's more like a deeper red, like terracotta or even that red umbers. But in any case, it reads like a camel kind of. And wow, those are fabulous together. Aren't they so good? So anyway, and this pink is actually washing out in the camera a bit. It's way more bright. Um, now that I'm looking at the monitor, it's way more bright um, in person. So FYI, but in any case, um, I don't know what this is going to be. I have tried the triangle wrap. I don't think I've got the gumption for that project. You know what I mean? The gumption it takes a lot of gumption. Okay, last but not least, let's go into our giveaway and unboxing of the Notre Dame. Okay, so. Newton has an interesting way of doing their um, collections. I think every month they release some new colors. And then there's a window of opportunity to purchase it, and then it goes away. And I think it's a small window, like a few days. And if you're on their Patreon, then you get first dibs, sort of. Like you get notified first, and then you can buy it before it goes public. So I've... I think I was notified through the Patreon. And by the way, they have a lovely video um, Patreon situation. The owner makes really beautifully curated videos and they're just very um, relaxing and inspiring to watch. And it's just a beautiful vibe and a, yeah, anyway. So let's just see what's in here. So I got this, I, ha I think, few months ago I wonder if it says um, oh in February I think it was in February the February update and I I never opened it because I thought maybe this will be a good giveaway and I think it is and I got oh my gosh because I figure if you're ordering Newton you might as well order a sweater's quantity because you might need it okay so I want to keep this super neat, but I don't think I can do it. Okay. 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 Let's see what we got here. Okay. This is loose. 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 And this is 300. Gram. So definitely enough for a sweater, me thinks. Let's see the color. We're just going to peek at it. Little peekaboo, peekaboo, where are you? 
where are your loose oh it's good it is really good oh my gosh it's kind of more than i thought it's like better than i thought can you even oh my god This is sunshine in a cup. And you know what? I didn't know what this looked like. This is honey. This is honey. Isn't it crazy how things work out? We started the podcast talking about bees and the hive, and this is the color of honey and beehive. It's completely the same color. Wow. <laughs> I'm having a moment. That was just so, so, completely like a divine moment it's incredible so to whoever this goes to it just i i believe like it has the energy just like the music just like the tuning just like the bach just like the c major just like the beehive being a place of restoration and peace and health and renewal like this has all the energy of that so for whoever gets this May you feel it every moment that you are in touch with this yarn. It's very special yarn. So there are, there are again, multiple balls of this um, in here. So yay, yay, yay. Um, so I am just going to pack that up neatly and send that off to our giveaway winner. And we'll do the drawing either... You know, depending on how many people um, participate, we'll do it this week, or if we need another week, we'll do it the week after. But in any case, again, to um, be eligible to, for this giveaway, just answer the question, this question in the comments below, which is, what color pairing are you interested in using for any future knits or, even beyond that, like what color pairing do you love? Um, I know that when my sister was planning her wedding years ago, she was loving the pairing of like a brown with a light blue. And that was like her palette. I want brown and light blue, everything. Um, you know, we were talking about like this pairing, which was a fun pairing. This pairing, which I really love the pink and the brown. So I'm curious, what do you love? What two colors? do you love as a pair okay so i i'm like still reeling that this is honey this is honey and this is the hive life is amazing anyway love you guys thank you so much for listening and spending time together and i hope that you will subscribe help me to grow the channel spread the word it would help me a lot and i just really um I'm so grateful for you and love you and thank you. And I will see you next week. Okay, have a great one. Bye.